The recent state banquet held at Buckingham Palace to welcome the South Korean president was a dazzling display of royalty, diplomacy, and attention to detail. As a veteran royal correspondent who was fortunate enough to get an exclusive behind-the-scenes glimpse before the 171 distinguished guests arrived, I observed the meticulous preparations undertaken to host such a monumental event. From the towering floral arrangements of ferns from the Windsor Glass Houses to the glimmering 4,000-piece Grand Service silver gilt tableware dating back to the early 1800s, the palace was a hive of activity. Staff sipped to and fro, making adjustments and tweaking placements to ensure absolute perfection. The rich aromas of gravy and pheasant wafted from the kitchens, mingling with the scent of petite tartlets soon to be presented to guests. Chefs labored over ornate sugar craft flowers, painstakingly hand-painting each delicate hibiscus syriacus, the national blossom of Korea, to adorn the petite fours. In the massive ballroom, footmen and women raced about, some with neckties still undone, inspecting table linens for microscopic flaws and polishing acres of glass and silver. One could discern subtle indications of the new Carolian style mixed with long-standing palace tradition. King Charles embraces environmental awareness, so the cascade of regal flowers will be repurposed and reused rather than discarded. The seemingly endless array of etched crystal and china still bears some remnants of Queen Elizabeth's cipher, but much has been refreshed with King Charles' monogram. Though considering the gargantuan quantity of stemware and dishware in the palace pantries, the unhurried transition is understandable. As I walked past the fully laden banquet table before the reception, I marveled at the precision and effort dedicated to ensuring a perfect diplomatic experience. The staff had clearly been preparing the space for days, methodically assembling the components of the impressive U-shaped table. Under the radiance of the checked crystal chandeliers, the table sparkled with the magnificent solid gold grand service commissioned by George IV in 1811. The collection encompasses 14 tureens, 288 dinner plates, 118 salt cellars, 12 ice pails, 58 dessert stands and 107 candelabras, simply stunning in its opulence. This exceptional attention to detail reflected in everything from national cuisine to symbolic floral tributes is what establishes Buckingham Palace as an unparalleled global bastion of soft power and influence. When President Yoon suk Yeol later addressed the gathering of dignitaries, he was clearly awestruck, praising King Charles' hospitality and leadership in perfect English. One glimpse of Prime Minister Sunak's delighted expression made it evident the state visit had accomplished its diplomatic purpose. By incorporating the magnificent history and traditions of the British monarchy with current partnerships and priorities, this state banquet paved the way for a reinforced alliance between the UK and South Korea. As a frequent reporter on royal events across the globe, I can unequivocally state none compared to the exceptional refinement and consideration underlying every aspect of a Buckingham Palace formal dinner. The orchestra tuning their instruments as clerks review seating charts and security prepares to clear and sweep every inch of the palace conveys the enormous scale of coordination this demands. As soon as one successful state banquet concludes, Preparation begins anew to receive the next dignitary with the same remarkable attention to detail and flawless execution. The subtle indications of King Charles' more eco-conscious practices, blending with enduring palace tradition perfectly reflects the monarchy itself, preserving powerful historic customs while gradually evolving to meet modern expectations. Just as the visit affirmed the strengthened ties between allies, the dazzling display of hospitality and privilege reaffirmed the British royalty's enduring power to charm and influence. From exquisite handcrafted confections to the majestic gold-drenched grand service, the intricate etiquette and orchestration culminate into a singular experience found nowhere else in the world. The preparations for the lavish dinner held to honor the South Korean president and first lady began long in advance with no detail overlooked by the palace staff the banquet table stretching imposingly through the ballroom was meticulously decorated per traditions dating back centuries, a spectacle meant to impress foreign dignitaries with British pomp and grandeur. The fine china settings alone numbered over 2,000 pieces, 
Each place was precisely laid out with layers of cutlery, glassware, and decorations handpicked from various rare royal tableware collections, many of them priceless antiques gifted by past monarchs. At each setting stood stacks of plates adorned with the royal cipher, surrounded by no less than 10 pieces of cutlery, including specialized ones like ice shovels and olive spoons, rarely seen outside of these exclusive state affairs. The array of glasses, like the champagne, water, multiple wine, dessert, and after-dinner port glasses, allowed for a multi-course culinary tour de force. Linen napkins were folded into an elaborate Dutch bonnet shape. The place settings were further bejeweled with condiment croutes, fashioned whimsically as nautilus shells and Egyptian motif salt bowls, next to resplendent gilded candelabras styled as apple trees with sculpted figurines from Greek mythology. As remarkable as the table decor was, the floral arrangements were equally dramatic. Colossal statement bouquets towered down the table, spilling from grandiose silver pieces depicting Pan playing his pipe. The brilliant crimson, violet, and navy blossoms were freshly cut that very day from the estate's orchards and on-site nurseries, as per the queen consort's wishes to reuse palace flowers for charitable causes later. Still more ornamentation waited to be trotted out with each successive course, like the antique hand-painted Minton dessert set, or the diamond-encrusted Rockingham service that cost its weight in gold. Few banquets in history could rival this one in extravagance. Fittingly, no expense was spared. Yet behind the scenes, the new king had discreetly requested the thermostat to be adjusted down a few degrees to conserve energy, proof that this eco-conscious monarch walked the walk. The guest seating chart read like a veritable who's who of dignitaries rubbing shoulders with celebrities. World leaders and nobles were matched with famous musicians and media moguls in an unlikely but inspired mix of status and star power. At the head table, the crowned heads of Britain hosted South Korea's president in the place of honor. Alongside the heir to the throne and his wife, the Prince and Princess of Wales. After a reception of mingling with cocktails, the party was summoned to their assigned seats for the start of the ceremonial dinner. In keeping with tradition, the king remained standing to deliver the first toast. He welcomed the foreign dignitaries while referencing touch points in Korean culture, even a cheeky mention of the smash hit Gangnam Style. This triggered a priceless reaction from K-pop superstar Jisoo, a guest in attendance. The megawatt singer was clearly bold overhearing her world-famous group, Blackpink, acknowledged by the monarch of Britain. With the formalities concluded, the lavish multi-course feast commenced. However, when their majesties had eaten their fill, all plates were promptly cleared as protocol dictates, regardless of whether others at the table were also finished. After an hour or two of dining and digestion, guests were invited to spill into the dazzling adjacent state rooms for dessert, digestives, and coffee, while being serenaded by members of the Philharmonia Orchestra. By approximately 10 p.m., this exhilarating glimpse into the pinnacle of British high society had concluded. Attendees described the electricity in the air, the locally resourced food, the blinding diamonds and platinum bling, the priceless antiques and cultural treasures on display. Everything came together flawlessly thanks to centuries of institutional knowledge, right down to the king and queen themselves sneaking a final private walkthrough mere moments before their guests' arrival, guaranteeing perfection. Yet for all its cultivated sophistication, some recurring quirks persist that visitors find endearingly amusing. The extensive cutlery can prove confusing to navigate and food still gets whisked away the instant their majesties stop eating, leaving slower diners struggling to keep up the quick royal pace. But all trivial minutes compared to the elevated experience of Cinderella-esque fairy magic that only unfolds in this fashion at Buckingham Palace a handful of nights per year. Dear friend, if you like everything new about the royal family and don't want to miss all the novelties, subscribe to our channel and like it. By doing so, you take part in our development. We work for you.